Welcome back to RuneCast. Today we're going to do another great book review. Just going to get some sage from the old apothecary there. Here we go. Today we're going to talk about this book here by uh, Donald Tyson. It's been a favorite of mine for a while. It is a really good book. It's called Rune Magic by Donald Tyson. And you will see in a moment why it's one of my favorite books. Let me put this sage up here. Take my rune staves and put them over here. In this book, you can see it shows the rune master there casting the staves on a white cloth. Um, that's what drew me to this book. When, when I saw this book, I was already casting this way and um, I had to get it. I was like, what is this? And you can see how he's, you know, He's throwing them out there on the cloth. That's the traditional way. That's the the way when the Romans came into the German territories in the first century A.D. This is what Tacitus, the Roman historian, witnessed the shaman in um, in the wildlands. It, witnessed them doing this uh, ritual, casting the, the staves this way. And he documented it uh, quite uh, in a lot of detail. And so that's, um, that's the method I love to use. And that's the method I'm, I'm showing you all here. Of course, there's other ways to do it, but that's my personal favorite. So let's dive into Rune Magic with Donald Tyson. Uh, he's been writing books on runes since the 1980s, so possibly one of the um, oldest, along with uh, Edred Thorson and um, Freya Oswin, also going back to the 80s. I have a couple of books by Donald. I think I have another one, actually, but I, this is the only two I could find on short notice. Rune Dice, this is awesome. If you've ever made your own Rune Dice, I have a couple of different ways. But I, I love this book. This was awesome. I had to get that because I was at one point I was into making some Rune Dice. So, but Rune Magic. Let's talk a little bit about Rune Magic. And the reason I love this book is because there's a lot of literature out there and a few rune authors do this but he did it really well he was like one of the first i think to do it that i was aware of um you know every rune book starts out with a little bit about the history and the background of the runes <clears throat> but he took it a step further he did a little bit different and i really love the way he kind of gives us an overview of, you know, the Edas. And the Edas, if you've ever tried to read them, they're, they're, they're kind of hard to read. Uh, the translation, there's a lot lost in translation when it comes down to modern English. I'm sure there's tons lost. And they're just a difficult read. Uh, they don't, words don't seem to go together right. Phrases don't, uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a tough read. Um, it's worth it to get through them. If you're going to practice runes, uh, to read through them, understand them as best you can. But what I loved about Donald Tyson's book, Rune Magic, is the fact that he kind of just gives you the cliff notes and explains it in regular English, some of the most important things. Um, and this is kind of how he describes it. In the beginnings, um, uh, Teutonic legends say was a void. No ocean rolled through its vast emptiness. No tree raised its boughs or deepened its roots. To the north, 
beyond the abyss formed a region of cloud and shadow called Nephilim. To the south formed a land of fire, Muspelheim. Twelve rivers of pure glacial water flowed out of Nephilim and met the corresponding rivers from Muspelheim, but these were filled with bitter poison and soon solidified. When the icy waters of the north touched their rigid serpentine bodies, the abyss was filled with prickly hoarfrost. Warm air blowing up from the south began to melt the frost, and from the mingled waters rose Ymir, the frost giant, the first of, um, of all living beings, described in a translation of the Prosita. So what I loved about his introduction is he kind of puts it in plain English what happened. Um, so it's just really cool. Like, for example, um, after Ymir dies, um, it shows from the grubs and the rotting flesh of Ymir, um, the gods made a race of dwarves who were destined to dwell forever in the depths of the earth. Since they are all made, they cannot procreate. When, the dwar when a dwarf dies, a new dwarf is molded from the stones and soil by two dwarf princes created for this purpose. <clears throat> Man and woman were made from the trunks of two lifeless trees. Odin blew life into them. The god Honar gave them a soul and the power of reason. Lodur gave him the warmth and beauty. The man was called Ask, and the woman was called Ambala. And from them, the human race is descended. So, if you're finding it hard to understand the Edas, perhaps you already have them. <clears throat> this book kind of gives you a cliff notes, Donald Tyson telling of the basic stories. So, I would recommend this book for that alone. It's invaluable. He includes a lot of classic artwork here, you can see. These paintings were, you know, done probably in the 1800s, but still, you know, being depicted. And then he talks about the origin and the development of runes. Here's Odin's Nine Days on the Windy Tree poem, which appears everywhere. Um, it's good to know. I was led to a word from a deed to another deed. Yeah, this, this is a great poem. It's one of the best. Um, anyway, he goes through all of that. Uh, we talk from rock carvings to runes. A lot of great um, illustrations here. Old runic art artifacts, which are great from the archaeological record. Just a lot of really, really cool stuff. And he goes through some of the you know, some of the rune poems, the spells. Um, it's really cool. The charms. Well, again, more illustrations. Then he goes through the meanings of the runes, of course. Those are all good. What else did I like about this book? The rune magic. Um, this is really cool. He goes into the ritual method. There's a lot of really good rituals here, too. Good basic rituals. Of course, for me, you know, not... I kind of came up with my own rituals, and you will, too. I mean, you'll, you'll get the feel of it. You'll know what's what. But you read these guidelines and, uh, you know, some of these examples, and you'll get an idea. But his stuff about... Rune magic is great. The cutting, the re uh, reading, staining, evoking, and sending. Um, it's just really, um, really cool. I was kind of rereading it before I made this video and just was like um, sending the runes, you know, evoking the runes. All really, really good stuff. You know, sending the runes and... Uh, uh, sending the runes is something that, you know, I really, you know, practice from time to time. I love practicing when you're focusing on a rune and some of its aspects and energies and calling it into action, maybe from afar. Here's a complete rune ritual, which is 
another amazing ritual. Some really good stuff here. Let's go to the next bookmark. What do I have for you? Scrying and astral travel. This was an awesome one. How to scry and um, if you're not familiar with that, this book has a good outline of that and what its purpose is in magic and divination. So that's really cool. Um, divination by runes. And this is where it got really cool. Um, he calls them rune wands. I call them staves or lots, tines sometimes. But he goes into this great uh, ritual method. This is the 10 day. This one's really intense. Where you take nine days alternate fasting, go into the woods, find a tree, cut it down, make your wands. Um, it's really intense. It's very cool um, for something really super important. You could do that. Um, and then we go to, to other uh, spreads. He has runic cards. Of course, he'll talk about runic dice. Here's some basic quick reference, which is really cool. Basic quick reference, and then one more. Oh, yes, the appendices. And what did I choose this one for? Oh, yes, this chapter was really cool. These were personal thoughts on each of the 24. And this is something really cool if you're getting into the runes. The following impressions were the result of an experiment, an attempt to know the runes intuitively without the censor um, of reason. On 24 consecutive nights, a circle was cast, each rune successfully invoked and meditated upon. A written communication was invited from the rune gods, which was given an answer. He is here is the recorded exactly what was received. There were sometimes temptations to alter the wording of the lines for the sake of clarity. These were resisted. On occasion, two words would occur simultaneously to describe a single thing. Both were recorded. And the one that later seemed most meaningful selected. Exactly what the communications mean and whether they possess any intrinsic value or beauty is left to the judgment of each reader. So this is something you could do too, especially when you're getting to know the runes is meditating on them. Throughout my runic journey, um, I have done the same thing. One rune a day, meditation. Clear your mind, think about the rune. Let its properties and its energy come to you. So I thought this was a really cool exercise how we wrote this down. They're each like poems. So this is very intense, very cool though. After a journey like that of meditation on all 24, you should have a working uh, relationship with the runes and a good knowledge of them. So, another good book review. Rune Magic, Donald Tyson. And there you go. Thanks for tuning in to RuneCast.